This is the Hot Fish series from the University of Sterling. Hello and welcome to the Hot Fish podcast series, where early career researchers tell us something about their research and how it relates to climate change. Today I'm talking to Wenbo Zhang, who's at the College of Fisheries and Life Sciences at the Shanghai Ocean University in China, and works across a range of fishery and aquaculture issues. He was moved to challenge a recent publication that laid out a future for global food security being heavily supported by a large rise in marine aquaculture, which he felt gave a very unbalanced perspective. So Wimbo, in your Matters Arising piece, just published in Nature, you take issue with Chris Costello and colleagues' paper, The Future of Food from the Seas, that was based on modelling supply and demand for 2050. The study suggested that an appreciable proportion of future demand for meat, perhaps up to 25% of the increase required, will come from mariculture and can make a very significant contribution to global food security. So what stimulated your paper in which you present quite a different future? Thanks, Dale. Aquatic products and aquaculture already make great contributions to global food security and reduce the greenhouse gas emission as part of global food production, making it a research focus point in the current international academic community. But a real weakness in contemporary assessments has been the sidelining of freshwater aquaculture that actually dominates global aquaculture production currently and looks set to continue to do so into the future. Its importance has often been ignored by a research community with its focus on the sea. My research explored the contribution and the potential of mariculture, freshwater aquaculture, and brackish water aquaculture. First, water aquaculture contributes more to global food security, as it has comparative advantages over mariculture in the production of low-cost aquatic foods on a mass scale which is most needed by low- and medium-income consumers, especially in the global south. We think there is a danger that mariculture has become the focus of aquaculture policy agenda, with the potential for freshwater aquaculture and its very real impacts being overlooked. So Wenbo, what's the idea that the sea has massive unfulfilled promise to feed the world novel? Yes, Dave. The 2020 Nature paper by Costello and the colleges arguing that marine culture has greater potential to expand than freshwater aquaculture did not present a new idea. Many high-profile science and policy publications emphasize the importance and the potential of marine culture, which freshwater aquaculture largely overlooked. We have worked in the field of aquaculture for a long time. Professor Peter Edwards and Dave yourself, all have four, five decades of expertise in this area. And I am in China, as you know, China is the largest aquaculture producer in the world. We were aware that freshwater aquaculture is more important than agriculture. Part of this imbalance may be outcome of greater research interest. We found that the number of policy-related publications in marine culture is several times more than freshwater aquaculture. Also, marine culture mainly occurs in developed countries, providing fish for wealthier consumers in the global north. So that's what people think of is aquaculture. In reality, of course, the majority of the harvest from freshwater is much more affordable and readily available for consumers, especially less wealthier consumers in the global south. Meanwhile, freshwater aquaculture products such as tilapia, catfish, crawfish are increasingly being exported and consumed by the global north countries. We think these freshwater aquaculture producers and consumers are underrepresented in the global aquatic food policy agenda they are a type of silent majority. So after several online discussions and brainstorming, a group of scientists and I decided to write this commentary paper to 
emphasize the importance of freshwater aquaculture and to rebuttal Costello et cetera's arguments of freshwater aquaculture's constraints and bottlenecks. I think our research provides important policy considerations in developing aquaculture for the future. I think one point that Costello and many other authors have made is that a shortage of freshwater and land really limit further growth in freshwater aquaculture. Isn't that the case? Not really, no. It's certainly become accepted wisdom that indeed such constraints exist. But we do debunk that particular myth. While we also challenge the idea that space for mariculture to expand in the sea is much more limited than in Costello etc.'s model. Life cycle assessment studies using a comprehensive environmental accounting tool with well-established procedures and methods so that both fresh water aquaculture and mariculture require much more fresh water and arable land to produce the feed than for aquaculture production system itself. We expect freshwater aquaculture to generally continue to intensify and become more productive and efficient in terms of water and land required. But this is an area where research and innovation is really needed. The greatest concentration of commercial freshwater aquaculture tend to be located in area of relative water abundance and a key challenge is ensuring aquaculture become part of an integrated and efficient water economy in such areas. How might climate change impact on mariculture compared to freshwater aquaculture, Wemba? Costello etc. stated directly from the abstract, land-based expansion is possible but may exacerbate climate change and biodiversity loss and compromise the delivery of other ecosystem services. However, we contend that fed mariculture and freshwater aquaculture often have similar impacts on climate, land use, nutrition discharge and biodiversity, as feed use is the leading driver behind these impacts. Why should we rebalance efforts then to understand and improve freshwater aquaculture to meet global food security needs? We argue that uh, freshwater aquaculture has comparative advantages over mariculture in large scale production of low input, affordable aquatic products. The major freshwater aquaculture fine fish species are low trophic omnivorous fish, which are easy to reproduce and more resilient to low dissolved oxygen and eutrophic water bodies, and only need the simple technology and equipment to farm. Importantly, marine fish are mainly farmed in high income developed countries and China. But the consumption of aquatic products in developed countries has basically remained stable in the past 20 years. And the consumption of aquatic products in developing countries has increased rapidly. We argue that freshwater aquaculture can better meet the growing demand for aquatic products in the future, especially in developing countries. We suggest that a more balanced investment between freshwater aquaculture and mariculture is needed to improve global food security. Thanks for sharing those perspectives, Wembo, and to your co-authors, Ben Belton at World Fish, Peter Edwards from AIT, Max Troll and Patrick Henriksen from the Stockholm Resilience Centre, and Richard Newton at the University of Stirling. And of course, thanks to you for listening. Till next time, goodbye. This podcast has been produced at the University of Stirling's Institute of Aquaculture with financial assistance from the Belmont Forum on Climate and Health. Thank you for listening.